calling helicopter N975B. Longwood Field calling helicopter N975B. Longwood Field calling helicopter N975B. Longwood Field calling helicopter N975B. Keep trying, Paul. That's all we need. The electrical storm on top of a windstorm. Well, I hope we can contact them before it's too late. You gotta bring them in, Paul. You just gotta. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. Breathe easy, and before you know it, we'll have a machine up here that'll do your breathing for you. Don't worry, Mommy. I'll, I'll get well. Of course you will, Tommy. Of course you will. Tell me the truth, Dr. Gray, by the truth. Is he going to be all right? I won't lie to you, Mrs. Selleck. If we can get him into an iron lung in a hurry, he's got better than an even chance. If we don't... And if we don't, how long? Level with me, doctor, level with me. If we don't, without the iron lung, an hour would be a miracle. those doors on when I told you so we wouldn't be spitting out all this dust. If you tell people what you did with things after you took them off, I can put them on. Passing the buck, eh? Can't hear you. That's for sure. Better check it, Peaky. Started a ship. How much further do you think we still got to go? I'd say about 20 miles if we stay in compass. We're sure getting into some rough stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get above it. Any luck yet? No. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Bronson, reporter for the press, Les Edwards, mechanic for the Whirly Bird Service. Paul, my daughter Janet. Mr. Culver, just exactly what is all this about? Well, about two hours ago, we received a message from the highway construction office up in Black Canyon. It seems a, an iron lung is urgently needed. The young son of one of the employees has a crushed chest due to a landslide. And those shells on these things are like rocks. Go on, Mr. Culver. Well, it's 63 air miles to the canyon. I'd say about 180 by land. The roads are impassable. There's no landing strip, so that's why Chuck and P.T. volunteered. Mr. Culver, how long has this uh, Whirly Bird Service Company been in business? I don't see what that's got to do with... Well, about a year, Mr. Bronson. Why? Sometimes it's kind of hard for a new business to get started. Sometimes people will make up things. I don't know what you're implying, Mr. Bronson, but there's two fine men up there risking their lives so that a little boy may have a chance to live. Those two fine men happen to be very good friends of mine and my father's. They're respectable and they're honorable. Helicopter N-975B to Longwood Field. Helicopter N-975B, this is Longwood Field. Come in. Helicopter N-975B, this is Longwood Field. Come in. Give me that thing. Chuck, PT, this is Les. If you can hear me, head that copter back to the airport. You're running smack into a 70 mile an hour wind. And there's an electrical storm on your tail. Can you hear me, fellas? You're not gonna save that boy by having them turn back. They're not gonna save him by getting smashed to smithereens either. Take it easy, Les. Mr. Culver. You 
called my paper and said you had a story here. That's right. First, you tell me two flyers took off into a storm to save a boy's life. Then a few seconds later, I hear you trying to call them back. Mr. Culver, if those flyers turn back, you have no story, just publicity. You didn't call me up here for publicity, did you? Of course not. Isn't that your answer? You better get out of here, Bronson, and you better get fast. Now, Les, Les. Chuck and P.T. never asked for no reporter to come I'm here. I'm sorry, Les. It was all my fault. I thought it would make a good human interest story. But I didn't think he'd take it this way. Maybe if you had a couple of buddies up there, you'd feel a little different about it. On second thought, I doubt if you ever had any buddies. Thank you. We don't get above this stuff soon. This gear isn't going to be the only thing coming apart. You to put on those doors. No doors are going to stop this stuff. Quit worrying, PT. We don't make it, they'll look for us. Who's worrying? the other side to pull loose. Hold on, I'm going to set her down. From what I can make of it, there's no place for us. You can say that again. I try to set her down there, we're going to be slammed into one of the mountains. We can't go down, we can't go up. We better think of something fast. There's got to be an answer. Only one thing I can think of. What's that? Chuck, if we drop that lung, a boy's life goes with it. Let's be realistic, P.T. If we don't think of something fast, he won't be alone. Never heard you talk like that before. I said, let's be realistic. It's not going to do us any good to go back up there with that thing bouncing around loose. Our chances are swimming up even without this one. Well, we'll find a way. Look, P.T., I want to save that boy as much as you do, but that lung's not going to do him any good if it's found in the wreckage of a helicopter. Well, we're not wrecked by a long shot. We have no choice now. Storm or no storm, Chuck, I don't want to drop that lung. Not enough having a windstorm to contend with, much less an electrical storm. Can we go in now? I wouldn't. He's resting quietly, and I don't want him upset even a little. Can he hold out, Doc? What do you think? Your guess is as good as mine. All I know is he's making a fight of it. Why don't they get here? What's holding them up? Don't they realize... Easy it? now, easy. They don't even know Tommy, and yet they're risking their lives to save his. You're right, Doctor. You're right, of course. I just hope they get here in time, is all.
feet. Now if we can just get above this storm, we're in. We don't. The wind will know it's been in a battle. You bet it will. because I didn't. <laughs> Black Canyon should be on the other side of that mountain, dead ahead. Pretty clear out there. As soon as we get this taken care of, we better get this radio working. Yes, we have left to only keep us in the air another 20 minutes. I can't understand how we use so much. I wanted to... What? Oh, Naveen, I'll tell you after we land. I was going to tell you. Yeah. Come on, let's get this thing down. Well, that pillow won't be necessary, Mrs. Salick. We'll have to lay him flat. All right, Doctor. Well, we can move, Tommy, now. I'll give you a hand, Doc. Thanks. <coughs> Easy now. Let's try to keep him as straight as possible. What do you say there, partner? <coughs> Looks like you just gained a friend. There we go. I'll take him from here. Okay, Doc. <coughs> I can see old Les now, pacing back and forth, wondering what's happened to the copter. I can't hear you. Caught up with us again. No wonder we're not getting through. The boys out there deserve a lot of credit, Ed. I only wish there was something we could give them in return for what they've done. I think the look on little Tommy's face is that something. Longwood Field calling helicopter N975B. Longwood Field calling helicopter N975B. Have some hot coffee. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. like an electrical storm moving in. Yeah, it rode our tail all the way here. Looks like you're going to be stuck with us for a while. Pleasure's ours, Miss Martin. Is that man going to stay with us? How you doing, partner? Quite a boy you've got there, Mrs. Sally. Uh, thank you. We think so. When Tommy gets well, we're going to have to give him a ride in a helicopter, aren't we, P.T.? Oh. You bet. Would you like that? You really mean it? Just as soon as you get better. Power's off. Check that connection. That's all right. 
Try the light. Nothing. Must be a blown fuse. Box is outside. I'll operate it with a hand crank until you get it fixed. Well, that crank isn't here. Are you sure? Well, it's supposed to be in here. It's going to be all right, Tommy. Everything will be all right. It's not a fuse. If it's not a fuse, it must be a break in the power line. Well, what if it is the power line? The only thing I can think of is he's got a little flat Ingersoll. He's a camp electrician. But he's on the other side of the mountain. Doc, how long can that kit last without the lock? Not long. I've got enough gas for 20 minutes in the air. What do you have in mind, Chuck? We can get to the electrician and try to locate that break. You say he lives on the other side of the mountain? Yes. The only yellow house in the construction camp. You can't miss it. Come on. city for the iron lung. According to him, Tommy was in pretty bad shape. You better get power to them or he won't be in any kind of shape at all. Yeah, we've only got gas enough for 10 minutes. Well, we're not too far from the trouble. In section 14, temporary tie-in off the main power line. Just over the other side of that ridge. Blasted weather. Keeps my crews working morning, noon, and night. You mean there are more power lines down? Yeah, three of them. What do we do? Good question. The main thing is to get those wires spliced. Any ideas? Say, can you set this airplane, I mean helicopter, down next to that pole? Sure. Better go. for me underneath for a person chair. Right. I wouldn't have that guy's job for all the money in the world. Sonny, after some of the things I've seen you do today, you probably wouldn't want yours. All you have to do is hang on to this end, keep me from swinging into that live wire. Right. Sure got to hand it to you. Oh, you haven't seen nothing, boy. You ought to come around when it's really rough. Thanks a lot. This is plenty rough for me. What do we do now? Well, if you can take this thing up in the air and lower me, I can splice the wires. We can lower you if you can splice it. Start lowering.
Hey, wait a minute. I think we got it. Helicopter N-975B calling along Woodfield, requesting clearance. Come in, Chuck. Tell old Les Edwards he can quit pacing. The boy's doing fine and the ship's in good shape. You guys get us some gas, we'll be on our way home. Give you details when we get there. Wait a minute, PT wants to say something. Not only did we lick the storm, but wait till you hear how we repaired a power line in midair. Just get the high octane to us. I'll get it to you if I have to walk all the way. Start walking. If you don't mind, I'm going to make the next edition. i got to get back to my paper. Hold it a minute. Huh? What are their names? The flyers. Check. Chuck Martin and P.T. Moore. Why didn't you say so? I wouldn't have been so worried. You know him? Yeah, I know him. Give my regards. They're not publicity hounds. Hey, Chuck. Yeah, Les. Got regards for you from a guy named Bronson. Bronson? The reporter? The same. You know who he is, don't you? What do you mean? He's an old war buddy of mine. Rescued two of our guys when their planes were shot down. And cracked up doing it. That's how I got the game leg. Give my regards, will you? Yeah, sure. See you later. Flyers risk death to save boys' lives.